Hence, write down, I'm still on this question, the amount of salt leaving the tank permanent. Oh no, is that how I got that? Yeah, that's it. That's the amount of salt going. So now part D, just put your pen down for a moment. <clears throat> part D then gives you a, um, show this, right? Now, when I have a look at this, I'm still, my brain is still not cluing into how is this exponential growth and decay? I mean, I have some faith because my teacher has given me a title that says it is such, right? But what in this makes it exponential growth and decay. When you have a look at the equation in part D, hopefully you recognize that kind of equation. What were we introducing yesterday? Do you remember why we were talking about this? What's different between this and normal exponential growth and decay? Normal exponential growth and decay, right? Uh, things tend towards zero or, or from zero. They go up, right? But here there's like an environmental factor here that's changing what's going on, namely how much water is going in and how much is coming out, okay? So let's have a look at their equation. It says dq on dt. Let's write that down. dq on dt. That's one that they want us to work with. Now think about what q and t represent. I've got it written on my diagram. Have you got it written on your diagram? What is q? It's the salt, which salt? There's like three different salts here. There's salt, there's salt in, there's salt out. Which salt is it? Salt. It's the salt that's currently in the tank. Currently in the tank, right? So that's this quantity here, right? Now it's changing, right? Uh, is it increasing or is it decreasing? Just as a question for you. Increasing or decreasing? The amount of salt in the water, is it increasing or decreasing? It's, it's increasing, because I started with, with no salt, right? Uh, what word in the question told me that there was no salt? It was pure water, okay? So this is going up. What is making it go up? Uh, salt's going in, right? That comes from here. Salt is flowing in at this rate, okay? So I know that's making it change, right? That's the salt flow in, but also salt is being taken out at the same time. Do you agree? How much? Have a look at the previous question. That's why they scaffolded this for us, right? This is how much is being taken out at any given moment. Does that make sense? Since I'm taking it out, what operation should I put in here? It should be minus. That's reducing the amount of salt. Are you okay with that? Q, U on 1,000. Um, if you recall back to when we were doing rates of change right at the beginning and you get a derivative and you're like, it's negative, this is one of the reasons why I encourage you to say, don't just say it's a negative, interpret that thing for me. Tell me what's going on because I want you to think in terms of increasing, decreasing, not just pluses and minuses, okay? Uh, maybe for your own sake, because you're gonna come back to this working and wonder where that line came from, you might like to write, that's salt in and that's salt out. That's where those two figures came from. Okay, now have a look. How am I going to get from this to what they've told me? Have a look at, there's a result there that they want you to prove. Oops. What are you going to do? What's the difference between what we got? It's factorization, right? That's the only difference. So um, because this is a show question, I'm going to be super slow about it. Um, I'm going to take out the negative w first. So that negative sign being taken out means I can switch the order of my two terms. So that'll leave q on 1,000 at the front and minus 2 at the back. Is that an okay factorization? You're right with that? Is this a sufficiently small step for you? What do I have to do to get from there to their result? I'm going to take out the the, th oh, the, on a, the division by a thousand, right? So minus negative w on a thousand, and that leaves me with, ta-da! Oops, another zero. What I was after. How are you feeling? This question didn't start with, here's an exponential growth and decay model. Ta-da, off you go. Okay, it started really far away from that. We had to wrap our head around all of this. But hopefully we recognize, this is just like, it might as well be Newton's law of cooling, right? It's the same kind of idea in here. Your rate of change is proportional to this difference here between how much salt's in there and um, how much salt you're putting in. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of my beautiful diagram now so I can have the space. That's a shame. Let's have a look at party. What's it asking us? 
Aha, great, show that Q equals, now you can do this, you don't need my help to do this. This is where an exponential growth and decay question usually begins, isn't it, right? They give you an equation, uh, if Q equals that, Is it negative, what is it, WT on a thousand, I think? Yeah. Yep. This is where the question usually begins, right? But they could totally ask all of this, and if you saw it, you'd be like, whoa, what do I do with all of this? Well, it's trying to get you to this point, okay? Now, I'm going to let you go ahead, and you can prove it. How am I going to show that this satisfies my differential equation? What will I do to it? All you need to do is differentiate, and a tiny bit of algebraic rearrangement, okay? But as you do that, they don't ask us to do this, but I just want to, um, I just want us to graph this. Can we graph it, just roughly? What is this thing going to look like? Hmm. Think about it. As you put, put together your couple of lines, uh, this, this 2000 here, what does this do to a graph of an exponential function? This is my, uh, yeah, this is my Q axis and here's my time axis. It raises the entire graph up, right? So instead of my asymptote, which is normally at zero, my asymptote's gonna be at, at Q equals 2000 up here. So let me just arbitrarily call that Q equals 2000, okay? Now, then you have a look, oh, wait a second, that's a minus sign, is that a minus sign? No, it's a plus sign, it's okay. Uh, if you have a look at this guy over here, right, what effect are you going to have when you have a look at this equation over here? A, as you're going to work out, do they ask you? Oh no, we haven't. Oh, I need to do part F. Okay, let's just leave that there for a moment. You'll see why. Um, have you proved part E? Have you differentiated? You've rearranged? Um, that's pretty standard, so I'm not even going to bother writing it for you. We need to determine the value of A. So there's this constant here, right? What kind of information do we have in the question that allows us to work out A? Just going to pause there and let you have a think about it. You need to use some kind of condition that connects time with the amount of salt. Is there any time when you know how much salt there is in the tank? We actually, we actually mentioned it earlier, right? The initial condition is commonly, it's not always, but it's commonly the result they give you, right? So initial means at when, rather, t equals zero, how much salt is there? We talked about it before. Zero, zero. It's, it's pure water. So Q equals, whoops, why am I writing a one? Q equals zero, okay? So you can pop that into this equation we've just been provided, and you can use that to find out a value of A. When you do that, can someone tell me what you've gotten? Okay. Now I'm ready to graph this thing. Sorry, I was a bit ahead of myself. I got excited, I like graphing. If this is the value of A, okay? So now I can actually say that Q is equal to 2000 minus 2000 e to the, all this stuff. What does this thing look like? Hmm. When you put a negative in front of an exponential, Right? For example, if you don't have to write this down, if instead of graphing this, which I hope we all know what that looks like, you've got an image in your brain of what that looks like, if I instead asked you to graph this, what difference would that make? It's flipped. Which way is it flipped? It's flipped. Look carefully. That minus sign actually is, is mucking about with the y. It's a vertical flip, isn't it? Okay? And that's why you can see I'm actually going to be not above this asymptote, like the exponential usually is, I'm actually gonna be beneath the asymptote, below it, okay? In addition to that, you don't just have that minus sign, which flips it vertically, you also have that minus sign over there, which flips it horizontally. You see it's mucking about with the t-axis, okay? So that means instead of like, whoosh, it's going up, it's gonna go down. So in fact, this, here we go, is what you're going to get. Now, this is why I wanted this picture, because even though they didn't ask us, it's what is so helpful to understand why this question is weird. When we think about exponential growth and decay, right? This thing is increasing, but it's slowing down, right? Which is not usually what you think of as, as exponential, but it's, it's a decay model that's growing. Let me say that again. It's, it's decaying, it's slowing down, right? 
but it's it's actually increasing. It's it's rising, right? The the gradient is positive, okay? And that represents my beautiful diagram is gone. That represents the fact that more salt is going in. It's increasing, but it's slowing down as it does that, okay?